Hey guys, this is Drew Douglas in for WordPress for Designers on blog.themeforest.net. Um, today we are just going to cover some cool WordPress tricks and the basics of uh, creating a plugin. Um, and we're just going to create a really small, simple plugin to do um, to do some work for us. And it's not uh, nearly as difficult as you think it might be. It won't take us very long. And um, if you're expecting the PSD, I know I keep saying it, but it will be here shortly. Jeff and I are finalizing a few things um, when it comes to the design and the source code of the PSD. We're working out the last bit of the details, and we will have that for you shortly. So stay with us. But today is going to be a fun day. We're going to create a plugin. We're going to mess around with our RSS feed just a little bit in FeedBurner. And uh, we'll call it a day, and hopefully we will have our PSD by the next series. Uh, apologies again, I caught another cold, so I'm trying to speak up here, but uh, I just have to put that out there. And I want to open up Firefox and address day 9, as it seems uh, I made a mistake. <laughs> like It seems that I do uh, do that a lot, but I apologize. And, you know, some of you had problems um, getting the comments, with the WordPress 2.7 comments to work, and uh, Willoughby caught the main one, which is... It should be if have comments. So let me show you guys um, a few things I want to point out. And I recommend if you're having any problems with that, just read the comments from day nine because you guys did an awesome job of, uh, of helping one another out and figuring out all the stuff I messed up. So, okay, um, I had if have posts at the top here. It should have been if have comments, obviously. I have no idea why um, I put that. And, and then in the bottom... Let me see if I can find it here. The submit. Okay, the type I had text, and it should have been submit, where the name is submit and ID is submit. The value is also submit. So those are the two main ones I think I missed. Um, okay, yeah. Um, also, this one was pointed out. On get option, site URL, make sure you put an underscore under there. I think I might have missed that. Um, but yeah, make sure there's a, whenever you use echo get option site URL, make sure you have an underscore under there. So, you know, I, I'm sorry about that, guys. I code from scratch just right along with you guys in some notes, so uh, I make some mistakes too. But hopefully you guys get that figured out, and uh, thanks once again for um, all of you guys that helped each other out. <coughs> it makes it a lot easier on me. So, with that said, let's close that tab. And um, the first thing you're going to want to do when you think about creating a plugin is take some time and read through the plugin API. I will give you the link below, um, but obviously it's on the codex and it goes through, I mean, the whole thing. Um, and that's one thing I really love about WordPress is the documentation in general is pretty, is pretty well, everything's pretty well documented. So you're going to want to check out the plugin API, um, read through that whenever you get some time so you can understand more about what, what we're going to do. Um, and we'll get to the plugin. Yeah, we'll we'll do that at the, the second half. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, and you won't be able to do this if you're working on localhost, obviously, or it won't matter. You're going to want to do it when you go live. But um, FeedBurner on FeedBurner.com, uh, which just got taken over by Google, um, is a way to handle a lot of your RSS feeds, and and it, most people end up using FeedBurner. So what you can do with FeedBurner is have um, give your users and readers an option to subscribe by email instead of um, they can also do regular RSS but they can also subscribe um, with if they wanted to with their email address and get any new posts or um, articles that you publish uh, directly to their email box so that's a really good way to um, it's a really good way to get you know pulling more users into your um, to your website is by offering this option. So all you have to do for this is register a FeedBurner account. I'm using mine for dev tips is obviously uh, our WordPress blog we have going on right now isn't live anywhere. <clears throat> but when you, when you go live, you know, you go ahead and register an account and we can do this for now um, with, with any account, dev tips. And you will click on publicize and then you'll click on email subscriptions here. And you can just uh, copy and paste the form code It'll give you a little code here, and then we'll open up Coda, and we will, um, you know, we'll just add a little subscribe to our RSS feed by email option here in our sidebar. 
for now we'll just put it in the list tag there's style it however you want save that and we'll see if that works whoops refresh our page okay great enter your email address delivered by feed burner um, you know this doesn't have to be styled this way at all in fact I encourage you not to style it this way um, but yeah that is how you know then I could enter my email address if we weren't on you know localhost and, and subscribe to to uh, all the articles so that's a like I said that's a good way to use feed burner to pull in more users once you have your blog actually going and and that's something people ask about is how do you get because I think you'll see that on a lot of popular websites like CSS tricks and um, I think all of our tote sites um, have them as well so it's a nice option to offer okay and for the second half we are going to create a plugin so let's go back to plugins we'll open up our plugins folder if you don't know how to get there it's in WP content and then plugins and we'll go ahead and we'll be in our plugins directory and we're just going to create a new folder and we'll name it um, DD for Drew Douglas promote and you always want to make sure you have a pretty unique plugin name so there's no conflict so I always um, tend to prefix mine with uh, DD so we'll go inside our DD promote folder and we'll just make a, a new file for now we'll just called index.php and we'll, we'll we will excuse me we will open up some PHP tags and some comment tags okay now you remember when we first did our style sheet that we had to give uh, for our theme that we had to give WordPress some information about our theme so it could display it to the user um, when they go to activate the theme so we're gonna do the same thing with our plugin so when a user goes to the plugin page they um, they will see our plugin information so I'll just take this line by line and the first thing we'll do is we'll go plugin name and you know call it anything you want I'll just say my promotion plugin plugin URI I'll just put WordPress for now or theme forest it's probably a better idea for me description uh, you know a, a plugin to promote each article version 1.0 author Drew Douglas and author URI and I'll just put my site devtips.com okay go ahead and save that now and um, Plugins now are, are pretty much a function or a class that WordPress looks for and then activates under certain circumstances. So typically you would do this with object-oriented uh, programming and, and have all of your uh, methods inside of a class. But for now, we, you know, if it's a very basic plugin, you can just use a, a PHP function with a, and just make sure the name is, is uh, not a name that's going to collide with another um, plugin function name. That, that they may already have activated which is why I tend to prefix everything with DD my initials and um, and, uh, that, and that helps to prevent any name collisions that could happen with different plugins because that could be very frustrating for for an end user to ha have two plugins that all of a sudden uh, collide with one another okay so we're gonna start off with a basic PHP function here and we're just gonna say function and we'll just call it DD basic promote and inside we will pass it the argument of content okay now what we want to do with our what we want our plugin to do is let's say I go to our article remember how we went inside our single uh, .php theme file and at the bottom of every article we added uh, a little bit of pr promotion and encourage them to subscribe to our RSS feed well that works and we can open up our um, you know our single.php file and do that but it's nice to kind of uh, keep that away from you know editing our theme files and just be, uh, being able to do it um, more abstractly with the plugin 
Um, so we're going to do this to where we'll have to activate it, but if you just wanted this functionality without making a plugin, you could just drop this code inside of your um, functions.php file, which is how you would include um, custom theme functions and etc. So that said, let's move on with our function. First thing we want to do is, no matter what, we want to echo out the content. So that way, first we're putting out any content ahead of time, which will usually be the loop in an article, something of that nature. But now we're going to throw a conditional statement here. We're going to say if this is a single page, so if this is a single article, we're going to do something. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of my closing function bracket here because we're going to escape out of PHP. Um, we could do this with you know colons as well as we've been doing, but this is just a cool way to kind of keep PHP separated from HTML. So right now we're just saying if is single and then we're going to write some HTML um, here. And I think our class is, we had a div class of promote. And inside that we had um, enjoy this article. Inside some h2 tags. Paragraph. And if you have enjoyed this article, you know, consider subscribing. To our, and then we'll have a link to our RSS feed here. So we'll open up an anchor tag, and inside we'll do PHP blog info RSS2 underscore URL. Okay, and then we'll just say subscribing to our RSS feed. Okay. So that's the HTML that we're going to add onto our content. Um, onto the, we're going to append to the bottom of our content if this is a single article. But we still have a few more things we need to do to make this work. Well, first we know we need to close off our if our if uh, bracket curly brace there. So there's our if and our function one's still open as well so we close that. So now all of our our function and if statements and HTML is taken care of but we still need to to tell WordPress uh, what to do with this function and that's where the add filter and add action um, WordPress uh, methods come in and I'm going to show you a link in a second because this is um, this is what allows you to just do. This is what allows you to fire your plugin off, pretty much. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll explain this more in a second. But we're going to type add filter. We're going to say the content. So we want to add a filter to any of con any of anything that's considered uh, a content, which would be like articles and things like that. And then we're going to add our function name onto that. So dd underscore basic promote. I cannot spell promote today. Okay, we are going to save that. I'm going to go into Firefox and this is the API filter reference and there's all kinds of um, different filters you can apply but basically if you um, if you come here, of course I will link to this, um, you can kind of learn more about what a filter and what an action are because I'm not going to go too far into them today I'm afraid that that might be a little too much but we're going we're to definitely cover plugins more but um, you know, if you read here filters are the hooks that WordPress launches to modify text of various types before adding it to the database or sending it to the browser screen so we can filter things such as the content and append things to them and that's kind of the basic definition of a WordPress filter when it when it's dealing with plugins and uh, like I said before, I encourage you guys to check out the links that I'll have below if you're interested in writing a plugin. But for now, let's go to our admin panel, WP admin, and now we need to activate our plugin since it is in our plugin folder. Okay, we will see my promotion plugin. We will activate. Okay, plugin activated. And you can see the plugin to promote each article by Drew Douglas, you know, links to my website and has our you know the plugin URL also linked there so just from filling out those comments in the top of our plugin file WordPress can um, 
can uh, pull it out and uh, display it here nicely to the user in their plugin panel. So now that we've activated our plugin, let's visit our site. Let's, uh, let's check out an article. And then we'll see, okay, well we have two of the promotions showing up, which is good, but we need to get rid of the one. Well, now all we need to do is go into our sidebar, or our, uh, excuse me, our single.php, get rid of our hard-coded HTML that we have in there. Oops, no, I do not want to delete. We'll save it. Come back and refresh. And there we go. And now all of this is being added more abstractly through our plugin. Um, and that's just a good way to, you know, um, add more functionality. And you can see how, how creative you could get with just a basic plugin adding content to the bottom. Um, you know, you could have all kinds of social bookmarking icons here. And that way, if you decided to change anything or, you know, the theme upgrades, um, you don't really have to worry about all your individual theme files that are hard coded. You can just leave that up to the plugin and change anything in your plugin or in your function that you need to. So let's go over our um, basics of creating a plugin. Just kind of go over what we did one more time. Go into plugins. We created a new folder called dd underscore promote. And a new file with index.php for our plugin. We could have multiple files here if we needed to. Um, we added our comment, which we need for our plugin, all of our comments that tell WordPress what our plugin is, um, what our plugin is, and our description. And then we used just a basic PHP function. We could have used a class with methods, but this was so simple that all we really needed was a function. We made sure to give it a basic name. All right, not a basic name, I'm sorry. A, uh, a name that won't collide with any other names. And we echoed out all of the content first. And then it, we appended onto that, if it was a single article, our little promotion that we've, um, that we've been using for this screencast. Lastly, we fired everything off with the add filter method, and um, we filtered the content with the function of DD Basic Promote. So that is a super simple plugin. Um, we can use this to do all kinds of things, just this basic knowledge, and we will get more into plugins um, down the road. Um, if you wanted to, you know, take it one step farther, you could always do, uh, to prevent name collisions, you could always do, you know, if function does not exist, then have this function. Um, I'll do that another time. I, I don't want to confuse you guys too much here um, for those that are new to plugin development. So I think that's everything I want to go over for, uh, for this day. Um, like I said, we're getting to our PSD soon. Um, working at the final details, so... We really are doing it, um, so stay with us. Um, happy WordPress coding, guys, and have a great day.